Okay, and we are live tonight with Zach Murray and David from Non Origin. Hello, you guys. How are you? Hello. Hello. Very well. Very well. How are you? Good. Yes. Good. Okay. Good. Wonderful. So thank you everyone for joining these behind the screens with Zach tonight. We're going to pass on the word to David to give us some great announcement about Known Origin. David, off to you. Hi, everyone. Hi, Zach. Hi, Serena. Hey. Uh, I'm David Moore, co-founder of Known Origin. Um, we have yeah. actually just pushed our full redesign out today. So please go and check out knownorigin.io. Uh, you'll see that it's changed. A hell of a lot since the first uh, rebrand that we did. Um, we've focused way more on the art. We're making the purchase flows much easier, uh, improved UX, better load speed times on the pages. Um, yeah, it's much more art focused, much more artist focused, free text searching, just kind of search for stuff that you love uh, and you'll find artwork. Um, Today's behind the screens is with an artist that joined us in late 2019 called Zach Murray. Um, I'm really excited to see and hear. I've seen some of his um, videos that he does about the way he puts his compositions together. What I'm really keen to know about is like what his inspirations are, what drives him to create these pieces. I'd love to know more about his techniques. Um, he's an awesome artist. I'm really excited for this one. So I'll hand back over to Serena and Zach to kind of kick it all off and I will jump on the live. And if you've got any questions, please feel free to drop them on either Twitter or YouTube and we'll relay them back to Serena and Zach and try and get as many, many of those questions answered as possible. So have a great night and I will, I will see you soon. Thank, Thank you, you so much, David. Bye -bye. And Zach, it's very good to meet you. Um, thank you so much for being here behind the screens. No, it's an honor. Thank you. Um, yeah, I don't get to do these kind of things often. So uh, when uh, you sort of reached out to me to, to ask if I wanted to do it, um, just, yeah, without a doubt, just definitely want to just have a chat and, and speak up. Um, yeah, no, that's it's great. Time. And it's actually good to meet, actually, the artists, because so often we do see the work, but then we don't get to know much about who actually creates the work. And I think it's a, in a way, it is a, the beauty of the crypto art space. Um, mm. But sometimes we feel detached from, from the artist. So I'm very pleased to have you on this live chat. And something that David mentioned earlier is your technique, which is something I would love for you to tell me more about it. Um, from your work, I can see that you sort of create with collage but it's yeah. very fascinating the way that you bring things together and how you build those narratives in different layers. So tell me more about it. How did you develop that technique? Um, sort of just by trial and error, to be honest. Um, I sort of started out doing um, sort of photo manipulation composition. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, you do something like that, it involves layering. Um, and I wanted a way to because I really liked collages, but I never had much experience in doing it. I wanted a way to do collaging, but with like the photorealistic texture that you get from um, actual images. Um, so what I did was I had a play with vectoring, um, which sort of takes sort of different layers based on um, sort of like light information of an object. Um, and you split this object into layers um, and it, and you, the, the advantage of doing that is that you're able to um, have freedom with color of with what you choose in vector art. So any color you want, you could put anywhere. Um, I wanted that, but also with like the, the actual sort of authentic textures that you get with like skin pores and hair and stuff like that. So I wanted to combine it together. So you, you get a really nice collage, but with really photorealistic details. Um, so it just, I spent months sort of just playing around with how to combine collages, vector art, and photo manipulation to give me this sort of like unique sort of style that I guess I have now. So yeah, it's just yeah, about yeah. It is true because you can clearly identify your work. You know, you can identify the style mm. and the um, um, the sort of creations that you that you make, the composition. You know, I think it's very characteristic of the style that you developed, um, as you described it. And did you? 
were you like self-taught or did you get to study these at school or how did no, you, you yeah, learn no. about these tools? Uh, self-taught. Um, I started out actually um, with a like a sweatshirt business, which was science fiction themed. <laughs> uh, started that wow. around. <laughs> I started off in around 2018, um, and you know I was just sort of um, getting into. Well, I carried on photography, um, which something I picked up casually at, at university. Um, so I wanted to do something with that. Um, I quite like fashion back then, and so I started off doing that. But then I realized I didn't really like making the sweatshirts, but I liked the design aspect of it. But I had no idea how to, where to start. So um, I kind of just picked up Photoshop and spent hours on YouTube watching tutorials about how to do the basic things. Um, and to be honest, it's just that. It was just YouTube, try things out. YouTube, try things out for hours and hours and hours just practicing. Um, mm -hmm. and yeah, then I started to, once I started to get, the, the basic techniques under my belt, I wanted to say, right, okay, how do I put my fingerprint on my artwork instead of just following the tutorials? So then after following tutorials, it was just experimentation for months um, until I kind of walked into the crypto space, really. Mm -hmm. And the crypto, was that something that you knew about it and you wanted to come in, test, experiment, or how did that happen? Because uh, often was... I do... I do tend to ask that question and often people give me all sorts of different answers. So I'm so curious to learn how people land into crypto land. It, it, it was a complete accident. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so like I, I, I was, um, I could say, yeah, digital artists. I used to, you know, create these compositions and these photo manipulations and collages and just put them on your sort of same old uh, platforms like Behance and Dribble and, and Instagram and that kind of stuff and some print on demand websites like Society6 and that. Um, and then um, actually Giselle Flores, you know, Giselle. Um, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah Giselle. She, um, yeah, yeah, she um, messaged me on Behance and say, to say like, oh, your work's quite good. You should try out crypto art. Uh, and I didn't know what that was. I, I heard of like cryptocurrency, but that was as far as I... <laughs> that's as far as I knew about the thing man so like yeah I, I was like okay cool whatever I, I, I googled it and I was like okay it didn't really make sense um, at, to begin with so then I kind of forgot mm -hmm. about it to be honest and then I was like okay let me actually try and understand what it's all about so uh, after a bit of digging um, she showed me that um, there's a few platforms that you can showcase your digital art on and you know make something out of it so then um mm -hmm. That was that. I just created a few pieces and started to um, upload onto No Known Origin. And then there was a an event at We Work in Canary Wharf um, where you guys were doing a presentation about what you were doing. And I met a whole bunch of people there. And then it just took off from there. I just started making stuff and meeting people and uploading. Yeah, and I think that was stuff. only like a few months back maybe six in, or seven months back it was in uh, like that. it was in november i remember it because I, I did the mm. whole <laughs> it was in november definitely yeah so yes november yes yeah i do remember um about the event yeah for sure and you know i would love now to go and show some of your work from your non-origin collection so i'm just gonna share my screen now so that we can talk about um some of your work. Here we cool. go. Well, here we are. So we're now on your page, yeah. non origin. So I was quite fascinated about this composition because that's so many things I can read. But before maybe I express my thoughts about this, I would love for you to tell me more about some of the techniques you use, but also how you combine this sort of science fiction, fantasy, mm -hmm. and elements of culture um yeah. if that's okay <laughs> yeah so it was, um i said I, I said to myself i wanted to create something that had multiple focal points so okay i was making compositions where there was like sort of a subject and some scenery um and although i still like love doing that i wanted to do just a little bit more just have more to look at so um and also i've been like reading a lot about um, something called failing fast, which is just just about sort of 
trying out an idea without too much hesitation to see where it goes. Yeah. Cause I, I figured that actually um, when I'm creating things, I think too much um, about uh, what this, like, like what will happen if I tried this, would it be a waste of time? Should I put this element in? Should I not put that element in? So this was a chance for me to just put something in, make it fit and see how I feel. Um, and then mm -hmm. go on to the next thing as quick as possible. So it was just sort of like a, a mind splurge just to go on, go on to start it. So it's really progressive. Um, I did each section one at a time. So for example, where you have the uh, the arch with the Anubis mask on it uh, in the middle, mm -hmm. with the lady holding the tray. Um, I would have yeah. started with that. And as I built it up, more ideas started to come. So I said, okay, well, I like like that she's there, but I want her behind something or yeah, behind something quite quite big. What like what encapsulates that? So I thought, okay, get a mountain in there. And so slowly and slowly I started to put the pieces together just on a random trail of thought, just to see where, where it would end up. So then when I had the lady, the Anubis, the arch, I was like, okay, well, maybe I should add a little bit more of like a cultural influence. So I said, okay, what what's what encapsulates that? And I thought, well, it'd be cool to have some sort of henna or something like in that region um, involved. Uh, so then I started yeah. to pick out more images. These are all stock images, by the way. These, 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 none of these are ones that I've taken. So it's just a lot of free images that I find on the internet um, to put together. So then um, just bit by bit, I started to build from the center outwards um, with the hands and then the, the diamonds bit, the first layer um, and then the second layer and then what goes into it. And, you know, so you have um, a spaceship there, um, but also behind the spaceship, you've got um, nebula and lots of other um sort of um astronomy objects and um galaxy and stars and stuff like that um and then i said you know, okay how about you blend the face into there that quite like sinister or mysterious so i started it, and then it just started building up building up building up more ideas more <laughs> ideas and the piece came to a sort of like a draft of where i wanted things to be put and then i said okay now i'm going to apply my technique and um that sort of um where, where i kind of went off from there um the, mm -hmm. the work in progress video shows how i've done that and you see in the work work in progress video that i'm actually trying to put things in and i realize oh, i don't quite like that you get to see um the, the trial and error that goes through something like this because i don't start off one knowing what i'm going to make i never do i never start off knowing exactly what i make uh, i just have a general idea and try to build my way towards mm. it and that's this encapsulates all of that. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I love the way you described it and the way you are actually developing the work. Um, yeah. Something I wanted to, to ask you, you described this as an Afro fantasy. And yeah. I wanted to know if this is something that you have developed as a concept in terms of blending the two and picturing culture into the future and see how these two relate mm. um or if that is something that you know you sort of wanted to explore in a way and it was something that perhaps you were doing as well in the past and then now you are combining it um how did that come about the, the science fiction and the more cultural ethnical elements how did you get to mix the two together so um afro fantasy is is it well it it, it came from um, Af um afro futurism which is a concept that has existed way before i was born um it's yeah. you know mi mixing the sort of like afro-caribbean um uh, african cultures with science fiction uh in a place where you know, you 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 wouldn't have a you wouldn't have imagined such such a for example, you've got you've got um uh, what name the film uh what's it called uh, Black Panther for example yeah you've got mm -hmm. this like like you took like utopia of life where um it's like an alternative way things could have played out but you're mixing in that culture like you know history of the struggles and stuff with with like 
futuristic um, ideal, like um, like an ideal state where you have all the technology and all, all the possible things we could have had, had things gone the right way. Yeah. So, you know, a, um, Afrofuturism is something that um, existed way before. It's not something I've come up with. Um, it's something that I stumbled upon. Uh, and and mm -hmm. when I see Afrofuture superheroes, you know, like the Black Panthers and, 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 and the characters like that, um, I, I recognized them, but I didn't know it was actually Afrofuturism. I didn't know Afrofuturism was a thing. So when I started to look into yeah. the aesthetics of it, I said, oh, I quite like the way this looks. I would like to try do something like my own interpretation of that, try to, um, you know, have a go creating something under this umbrella. Um, and mm -hmm. I saw, and because um, I don't call my pieces science fiction because there isn't a lot of science in what I do. It's just fantasy. It, it doesn't make sense. Um, and that's why I call it Afro fantasy as opposed to. Absolutely. Uh, and, I, and I like the fact that. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I lost you for a moment. Um, I oh, like I the way you also took the fantasy world into something that it is somehow kind of like sci-fi looking, uh, mm. but at the same time, you you play with that concept because yeah. it shows these fantasy world. Um, so it is quite interesting that you treat the subject with um, a lot of passion and also, you know, it is quite iconic in what you are describing in this in this picture. Um, but at, at the same time, there's a playful element, which is also the, the fantasy world and the fact that it's a dreamlike um, experience. Yeah. So, yeah. and it's colorful, it's fun. Um, it tells a lot of stories in one picture. Um, and the technique is also quite fascinating. So yeah, thank you so much for describing this work. And before we move on to some other of your work, um, tell me something about the title, Pandemonium Finale. Yeah, so- How did you come with that? I'm, 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 I'm terrible at thinking of names, yeah, right? So I, I'm not one that's like, right, right. I know exactly what this is gonna be called. I just, I just, cause, I guess it was just a feeling of uh, just relief that I actually finished the thing because it took me so long. Um, I spent every single mm. day of like, the what was it, seventy-two hours, or you know, of 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 just creating this thing bit by bit. And when when I stepped back and look at wow. it, it was like, what is something that is, that 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 where you you've got a lot going on and it's all happening at the same time, um, and. <laughs> I just thought, well, there's a lot of chaos here, so let's call it, you know, this is the final, you know, this is all of it going together. Um, and uh, I, the I, grand yeah, finale. Yeah. The grand finale. I didn't, but I didn't want to say grand finale. I just thought oh, that was just all the same. So, yeah, no, it's just, just, just something that helped me. Under, like, if I, if I had looked at it, uh, what, you know, what, what, what kind of title would, 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 would suit it well? And I thought that was the one. Yeah, no, absolutely, and I love the Latin name and the you know, the, the controversial in a way, spaceships and um, colorful background and different cultures melting all together. It's it's yeah. crazy and um, yeah, fiction, fantasy, I love it. <laughs> and also <laughs> so you've, I see there's a link here as well, but I think yeah. you've captured the different uh, process yeah. and time yeah, yeah. that took you, 17 to 72 hours that took you to to create this collage work, yes, that's 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 a link to a uh, like a time lapse video of a bit of music and me cutting cutting the 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 the, the screen recordings into parts where it's mm -hmm. a little bit interesting because there are some boring parts, but I've, I've I've chopped it up to make it as as engaging as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, just to show what I've what I've done to create this. Yeah, cool. I'm just going back here to check if there are questions. And um, yeah, um, I'm just sharing a comment here. Right. When I look at some of your art, I get a real Stargate feel from it. Yes. <laughs> I was actually thinking about uh, the movie as well. I love it. Uh, yeah, that's great. I <laughs> it's like, a great yeah, reference. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you for that. Yeah, that's, I'm chuffed with that one. Yeah. Yeah. And. I was gonna then ask about some other work, but before I do that, um, have you ever exhibited 
Uh, you were saying before we went on the live that you are from Stratford upon Avon. Yes. So you're, you're quite close to me. I'm based in London, so we're not far from each other. And yeah. Have you had a chance to exhibit your work or what kind of response did you have from um, having uh, your work shown um, if you've done that, whether physical of, or digital? It, all right, yeah. Um, I have once actually. Um, there was there's there's a there's a like a, a magazine a small sort of magazine um, company um, called We Are Zana, um, and um, they're well they they're growing quite quite well right now. Um, they sort of reached out to me um, quite early on in this whole digital art uh, chapter of my life um, and said like do you wanna do you wanna do this thing? Um, we're launching our magazine. Do you want to come to this um, exhibition in Bristol? And um, yeah, I, at first I was like, Whoa, like <laughs> I've never done anything like this in my life. You know, I don't know what this is all about. I don't know what I was, what would you do? So yeah, obviously um, I, 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 I accepted and um, I went to create a science fantasy um, uh, themed floral piece for it to, to, to show on on the on the because I was really into sort of um, botanics and flowers and just sort of like mixing that with the science fantasy the nebula you know the, you know and, and all these sort of things into interstellar space so I just created I created something for that and um, yeah it was a you know a nice small event um, lots of people came actually um, and um, yeah it's like the first and only time I've done something like that um, it was really nice um, people were really really cool they really you know they were asking about my work and how i did things and about the technique and um yeah i can no, imagine you know i think your your technique is something that really you know captured the attention because you wonder how you combine things together and how you can um create that texture to the work yeah it's something i spend uh, even to this day I, I spend all my time trying to find ways to stretch the technique and other ways i can use it so um when people ask me about the technique and and you know comment on the technique it's 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 good it's uh, i like that and um you know it's yeah I'm, I'm happy with it yeah no it's um i think it's it's your own way of creating and um as i was saying earlier you can clearly identify it and um I wanted to ask you, are you planning to create more of those works? Because I think there is a lot of interest around it. So what is currently oh. going on in your mind? What what are you what are your plans for new creation? What to expect? So um at the end of um pandemonium finale, um I said I wanted to do more um of that kind. So I don't know what to call it. Yeah, it's a collage, but it's it's a collage with multiple points of interest. Um, I really want to spend mm -hmm. my time trying to put these things together in a way that might tell a story or is or is just good to look at. Um, you know, not everyone wants a backstory to to a creation. Some people just like to look at something nice. Um, it's just cool. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to do that, but I also want to um, try and stretch myself. I don't want to keep doing the same thing all the time. Um, I want to try and like work with motion. Um, and uh, I see that that's something that's quite, you know, that works quite well. I like what I see when I see motion. Um, it's not something I'm well versed in, but it's something I'm willing to learn because I think it will help maybe um, catapult my pieces in terms of how it makes people feel um, better. Mm -hmm. And you've done some work in motion because I've seen it here on the non origin yeah. page that you've done some of um, some, yeah. some, some work. Um, and yeah. you've also explored different kind of subjects um, into the work. So I, I see that you've done something that is more gothic and more portrait, but yeah. also some short clip um, that are showing some some motion graphic. Um, yeah. So there's a there's a question here that maybe can can be answered, which is about um, is there anybody in the NFT art scene that you would like to collaborate with? And would that maybe determine your next kind of work or style? Yeah. Um, so I'm, well, I'm working on something with Giselle Flores. Um, mm -hmm. I think 
work is super sick, um, uh, especially her motion work. Um, and so we actually started something quite a while back, but obviously recent events kind of put that on pause. Um, so that's something we're looking to complete, definitely. Um, Abby Sims, I feel like I think I'm saying his name right. Um, he's, a, he's another well-known uh, artist on the scene. Something, there's someone I really want to do work with. Um, I, I just like everything he does. Um, and I feel like um, doing something like that with him would teach me a lot. And I hope, hopefully I'm able to sort of help him out with that as well. Um, I'm trying to think of someone else that I would like to collaborate with. I think those are the two main people that, that are on my sort of to-do list in terms of like, I'd like to work with you um, in, in, in that, yeah. <laughs> Sire. Slaves, slaves, yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> really looking forward for those works then, Zach, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, it's all right. Great. Yeah, I just want to go back to the the page here on on your artworks because you were mentioning about motion graphics. So can you tell us a bit more about these two pieces here? We see one steel, which is available, and uh, Orion's belt. So how yeah. did you create those and what's the sort of inspiration behind it? So um, it's actually quite cool, this one. Um... It's so well. I don't know if it's if this is the official name. It's super macro um, photography. What you're looking at is um, I also make um, scented candles, science fiction um, inspired scented candles, which I'm I'm minting uh, in limited quantities per uh, sort of. Wow, yeah. where do I find those? <laughs> um, they I've got I've got two up on mint base. Um, but uh, I'm still creating some more. Um, but what you're looking at here is um, really, 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 really close up, granular level um, a shot of the, the wax in the candles um, reacting with something called mica powder, which gives this really shiny, glittery, sort of very starry, spacey look that you can see in front of you. Um, and as the candle is melting, these granular sort of um, like grains of powder, uh, glitter, are sort of moving across each other, multiple layers, and and it's and it, it just gives such a cool effect. Um, so when you when mm -hmm. when you actually look like when you actually do super photography, uh, super macro photography, and you look really close, then you get a center point of uh, focus, as you can see, and then the rest of it on the on the outside is like very um, like soft and you can see the bucket and it's all moving together. Um, so yeah, it's super macro photography of um, my my scented candles sort of reacting with um, sort of mica powder and light. Um, That's incredible. Who knew <laughs> that <laughs> wax could create such effect and so many different colors yeah um, wow yeah and yeah. these are the work um i guess it is this wax as well it looks like that's that's also so that's a still of um of the of the of the of the wax um it's obviously set mm -hmm. and uh right. you can you can see the, the light sort of reflecting off the crystals bouncing off and um i thought it was like it reminded me of like some type of surface somewhere else on another planet um just mm. yeah this looks cool so um, it's a beautiful texture yes thank you thank you it's crazy i didn't realize um how you were creating these works you know i thought this was a probably a sort of like motion graphic design uh, or something it's that... completely organic it's from it's, it's short yeah. in the yeah, yeah. Crazy. Yes, beautiful. And then we've got these two works here, which are referencing more, I would say, the Gothic style. And we mm. can Im imagine, you know, these old castles or church um, with different kind of like backgrounds. And then we've got portrait. So I'd love for you to tell me a bit more about these first two works here, and then we can maybe 
touch on the portrait that you have. Yeah. So um, this one, Mirrors, is um, more of like the sort of work I, I started doing, um, photo manipulation, uh, science fantasy scenes. Um, this one's more of a collage because of the hard lines. Um, it's mm -hmm. of multiple uh, multiple images. So you've got the mm -hmm. you've got the arch that you have here, the building with the columns and 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 that, and then you've got the the background with the lake and the and the mountain uh, is separate to the rest of it in the background, which is these sort of um, portal mirrors. I like to think they are. <laughs> Um, we're showing yeah. showing a different part of the universe. Um, in my mind, they're moving. Um, I should maybe I should do a, a, a motion for that one. And um, this is um, yeah, this is my technique. Um, quite showing quite well, uh, qu quite strongly. So, so it's yeah. How how do you create this sort of effect here at the front so, that I can see that yeah, looks so got, like a brush? Yeah, yeah. So it looks like a brush. So like, like it's it's based off. It's hard to explain. It's based off vectoring, which is why you've got mm -hmm. these solid green colors. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so I'm I'm breaking down an an, an image into layers, yeah. um, where you you've got these colors, and I've cho I've chosen these colors because I wanted this sort of feel, and then you and then I put sort of put back the original photo and blend it in, so I got so I can keep the stony sort of textures that you got along the arches. I'm pointing, but you can't see where I'm pointing. But yeah, <laughs> along along the columns, you got the um, sort of like a like the original stony texture. And um, I've sort of done a few things to make, to, to cause I, I like, although I like, um, you know, works of art that, that use paint and traditional techniques, I, I, I can't, I, I'm, 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 I'm no good with my hands. So, I re but I really like the look. So I wanted a way to um, bring this sort of brushy technique into the mm -hmm. vector with the texture of the, the stone and the, and, and the columns, um, just mm -hmm. so that it's vibrant, but it's also sort of photorealistic. Yeah. And I guess that's something, you know, that digital art allows you to do, to, to yeah. still be able to create and have the vision um, imprinting, imprinted into the work. Um, yeah. but using different techniques to achieve that result. Um, yeah. I see a shadow here. Yeah. Is that meant to be a man here or somebody or that's what is that? You. That's up to you to interpret. Ooh, mystery, <laughs> mystery. And there's yeah, a space yeah, yeah. there. I, yeah. So it, it, it is clear to me that you are fascinated about science fiction or, mm -hmm. you know, space, which, um, you know, yeah. Why is that something that you were always eager to explore and get to know what's out there? Um, I don't know. But yeah. I guess, how does that I, comes into your work so often? I guess so. I I I I I don't know. I mean, it might have something to do with like what what I was brought up on in terms of what I used to watch. Um, you know, mm. you know a lot of fantasy based and anime, you know, you, you, things from like Dragon Ball Z to Naruto to, to anything like that. Well, those, those are the main ones, I guess, for me. Um, I always liked the ideas that, the, especially the artists that come up with like the creatures and different planets they come up with uh, to, 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 to present to us when we're watching. It really captures your imagination. Um, you know, for example, Dragon Ball Z isn't just about screaming and transformations. If you look into the artwork and, and, and the scenery, that the art that the artists are, are creating for you it's just it, how they come up with these things is is, is amazing um so mm -hmm. you know always daydreaming always thinking about what would this look like if what would that look like if um it's sort of the sort of questions that i always have and um if i can't make music about it i'll definitely create something visual for people to see what i'm trying to imagine 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 <laughs> yeah so um yeah, that's sort of why I kind of do these things. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I, I have a lot. A... Sorry, go for it. No, I was, no, I was just going to say, that's, um, I, uh, you know, anytime I try to imagine something, I want to try to get it across to other people as well. Um, and I guess this is the best mm -hmm. way to do that. Yeah. Well, I have to say, you know, your work really captured me. So when David was showing me the, the you know, your page and your works, 
um, I was really fascinated because I'm, I'm, I, I do love science fiction. And so when I see um, things that we know from our, from our culture, from our everyday life, you know, um, put into a more fictionary scenario, it really captured me and it makes me think if there's anybody out there and how they would see what we do, you know, our way of living and if that would make any sense, you know, that's kind yeah. of what I keep questioning myself about and maybe in the hope of um, some form of life out there, who knows. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we've got these portrait. Um, yes. So yes, what what's the story of this one? I'm just so, waiting a few seconds to load. That's fine. Um, again, um, this is more. This is a, a result of experimentation with the, with this like way of working. This technique. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, I learned that you can you can vector. Um, I know that you can um, you know you can you can photo manipulate. But again, how do you put the two together? Um, so essentially, what you're looking at is yes, a face, but it's made up of. I can't even remember, it was over 20 different layers of um, wow. like astronomy, stars, there's flowers, there's, yeah. you know, solid color. And so from, from if you take the face, you've got all the highlights all the way down to the shadows split into individual layers um, with these different type of uh, sort of uh, astrophotography sort of blended into each one of these layers so that you still have the face, the face is made up of just light and darkness. It's all, all, all just images. Yeah. It, so if you, yeah, if now you, that I see it, yeah, close up. Um, yeah, I can see the you, layers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can see the different layers. So you got yeah, stars, nebula, um, and and flowers. And mm -hmm. when you Find them all together. You could separate all of these layers, and it will be just the layers. But when you blend them together, it makes the face. Mm -hmm. And did you take the portrait from from somewhere? Is that a picture that you took? Yeah. Is that somebody that you know? No, that's this is a stock image. So it's a stock image right. that black and white, um, and then I coloured mm -hmm. it. Um, and then whilst I was colouring it, I thought actually. Instead of just recoloring it, why don't I just use uh, multiple images to to make up the color? Um, mm -hmm. Instead of going for the normal sort of skin tone, why don't I just do something completely crazy and then use all these different yeah. images to make something like this? Yeah, it's really beautiful. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> no, well, I think it's um, I've learned so much tonight in terms of how you work and your way of creating those layers, because I think at first, probably you don't realize well enough until you see the work up close, how much work actually goes into every single work that you create and all these layers. Um, so thank you for explaining that. And I think it's, uh, yeah, it's worth mentioning that there are long hours behind every single work that you've made. Um, which you know in a way it tells me that you go with instinct and you you have a clear image in mind of what you like to create and then the work starts um but i also like what you said earlier about not knowing where you're exactly going and sort of finding that answer as you go through the work yeah yeah, yeah. Did i describe that correctly yeah yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. That no or? no yeah, you're, you're, you're spot on. I think it's, um, I like to say that although um, our area of expertise is creative, you know, it's arts, it's, it's digital, digi you know, it's design, there is a lot of problem solving in that. And I think a lot of people maybe outside of the art space don't realize how much problem solving goes into um, what we're doing. You know, we don't just pick up a paintbrush or you know, pick up a mouse or a pen and just say, okay, I'm going to create something and I don't need to think about what I'm doing. At every stage, there is a problem or something that you want to do, but you're not quite, no, you don't, you're not quite sure how to get there. So you, you, you're having to solve these, these problems and, and find answers to these questions that you have to then create something that's completely new. Um, so yeah, you 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 were quite right about that with that description. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, you, 
you already told me about what, what's going on in your mind in terms of collaborations, but if you were going to create a work, you know, that was going to happen, I don't know, on the back of what we've experienced with the pandemic and uh, the present times, what would you what would you envision for that? It, with reflection to what's going on with this, yeah, um, I wonder. Um, it would definitely be something that moves um, because I think this is a it's, it's, it's a period of time which has moved a lot of us and taught us a lot of lessons um, about mm -hmm. ourselves and about other people. So, you know, I'd quite like to do something that that encapsulates that lesson um, about, you know, appreciating your time, um, appreciating, you know, family, um, and also appreciating that maybe, you know, happiness is, is, is a choice um, based off like what you decide mm -hmm. to do. And um, the fact that we've all been locked down at some point of time in these six months or so, we've all somehow managed to entertain ourselves. So you can do that yourself. Um, and it's about imagination and it's something that I'm big on. I think if you can imagine something, you can definitely do it. So yeah, I'd probably do try to do something about, um, you know, the imagination and how one could live outside of a pandemic but in one's mind instead of actually being out there um so yeah mm -hmm. actually you give an idea i might have to do something like that yeah <laughs> yeah well the reason why i've asked you that question is because i'm actually curious to see that work coming from you um mm. because you know thinking about space and future and referencing um different cultures it makes me think how we will be changed once this is over or maybe it won't be over and it will be part of ourselves you know it's like a tattoo on our skin that yeah. will be there it will be part of our life of this century and um in a way within your art i see that you capture those moments in time um and you combine different stories and so i wonder whether these will become part of your composition at some point um as a present time but also in the future maybe looking back at what we've experienced um it will probably make us feel, you know, different about things. Yeah, no, no doubt. Yeah. Well, it's, um, you know, it's been a very great conversation with you. And thank you so much for walking us through every single work <laughs> that you have on Non Origin. I do invite everyone to, to keep the conversation going. Um, so feel free to keep in touch. Send questions now if you want. We can answer them live. Um, but otherwise, we'll be available on Twitter, uh, Instagram, and various social media to, to carry on the conversation with Zach. Is there anything that you'd like to add? Um, not really. Any thoughts, uh, comments on the community? How are you, how are you finding it? Uh, yeah, no, definitely. Actually, um, I'm... Ha I have to be absolutely honest. Like, I'm, I'm so, so glad that I found something like this because um and i think a lot of people would agree especially the, you know newcomers that never existed uh, that never thought that such a such a scene existed um we were we i think i can speak for some of them we were creating things that you know digital art didn't have a place um it just lived on your computer you created things to put on the Instagram and you you know you you you, you get a few comments and, and and people say you know it's nice and stuff but then you think oh you know can you make can you make something out of it um am I wasting my time should I you know do something else um so honestly you know before that I was thinking of maybe trying to do something else and maybe thinking you know this might not be for me so stumbling across this uh phenomena you know crypto art you know, cryptocurrency and stuff like this is it was a was a blessing. Um, I I was able to you know yeah. use what I found to inspire me to come home from work every day um, because I don't. This is not what I do all day. Um, you know, I want to do this every, every day of my life. Um, every time I come back from work, all I can think about is creating because I just like to do it. And um, if mm -hmm. what I create can inspire others to do the same. Or to do more or to do something different um then that's great that's that's what that's what that's what i live for um so yeah i'm truly thankful i yeah i don't know what i would do if i didn't find the space 
Yeah, absolutely. I think that's one of the most active space in the art right now, <laughs> I would yeah. say, with content, because everything else is sort of like, on pause and everyone's sort of waiting before art fairs and exhibitions and everything will be back to normal and when this normal is gonna be and how it will look like so of course museums galleries some have reopened uh mm. but there's plenty of them that are closing down or are restricting um, the amount of visitors every day so finding a space that makes art sustainable for the artist and uh, share something with the community. I think it's, um, it is very meaningful, especially around those times that we can communicate through art, um, yeah. you know, and not be shy about it. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, we, I know, I know that almost the whole world stopped during these like last you know, few months, but it seems like the crypto scene, I call it the crypto scene, um, just carried on. And um, there was no need to stop. Um, and it's we're quite fortunate that we have that option um because not a lot of people do um yeah so yeah no for sure definitely absolutely well this is a like a, a huge thank you to everyone that's been here tonight watching but also to the awesome team behind non origin and everyone in the space that has been contributing so much and keeping everyone positive around those times so just send a big thank you to everyone you and to you for making such great art. Yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Zach, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I hope we'll have a chance to meet soon in real life, maybe. Um, yeah. But yeah, otherwise, keep keep making art and um, I look forward to see your next pieces and collaboration work. Yes, no, thanks for having me. It's been great. Um, I really enjoyed this. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing what, what we do um, in the future. Super, yeah. And thanks again to, to Non Origin for hosting these behind the screens and well done for putting together an awesome website and platform uh, for everyone. Have a good night, everyone, and see you soon, Zach. It's been yeah. a pleasure. Yes, Take thank care. you.